We've got a, a race at Aqueduct and a race at Monmouth Park. So uh, that is going to be the Monmouth Stakes coming up in a little bit. But we're going to start off with the Better Roses. Oh, and before I get started, yes, don't forget to subscribe, everybody. So we really appreciate all the views, and uh, that was great. We had a really great uh, number of uh, views and traffic for uh, the uh, Triple Crown races, and the numbers have been going up. The live show uh, was a success. Um, we still need to get those uh, subscribers up. Subscribers are not uh, connecting to the amount of views we're getting. So just hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. And again, the easier it'll be for us to get these shows on video, on YouTube for free as early in the week as possible. And you won't miss a thing. Otherwise, right now we're still uh, putting only 100% of our videos and content on our Patreon page. So check the link in the description and you can sign up for just $5 a month. Okay, we're going to start off with... Uh, the seven furlong race to Better Roses. This is grade two for fillies and mares, four-year-olds and up. It's a $200,000 race as you go off about quarter after five on Saturday. Um, and uh, the first, uh, actually the favorite of the race, uh, morning line favorite, is Big Pond, the two-to-one shot. And if you take four to a, one. Uh, Big Pond is four-to-one? The two yeah, is four-to-one, four yes. The favorite is the six oh, line geez. next to the three-to-one. I hope my numbers aren't all screwed up. Okay. So, what'd you say? Big Pond is four to one. I, as, yes, a seed Blind connection is three to one. The six. Yes, I got that. Got that. Okay, and a seed three to one. Yes. Okay. No. No, six to one is seed. Jesus. Yes, Bruznet doing a great job of uh, keeping their computers. Their site crash. It's nothing they could do about it. Things happen. I don't think it protected better. All right, so uh, let's see. So Flying Connection and Big Pond, three and four to one. Let's talk about those two first of all. Let's start with Flying Connection. Um, Rob Atris, uh, Chad, first-time trainer percentage. What do you got on him? I mean, he's 17%, but look, I mean, this is Todd Fincher's horse. Todd Fincher has uh, has trouble getting uh, uh, dealing with uh, the New York State Board, getting his, uh, getting his license straightened out and everything else. It's a pain in the ass, so he just... He sent the horse up to Rob, uh, mm -hmm. but this is very much Todd Fincher's horse. Uh, she's a cool horse. I was uh, I was stabled with her at at Oaklawn uh, when she ran second in the Apple Blossom. And you know the, the thing with the thing with her is obviously you'll see that most of her wins came at Zia Park and Sunland Park. But I mean the company that she's been keeping, John. Right? I mean she's second. This was her last time behind Vava and Alva Star. Before that, she's second to a Dare Manor. Any of those three horses is one to nine in this race. So, exactly. I mean, really, while, while you're going to be able to make a case for a lot of horses in this race, she is the class of the race. She's the standout of the race. And for me, three to one is actually pretty much uh, fair odds for this filly as well. John? Yeah, she's fine. I mean, listen, she's fast. She's getting better, too. She's a four-year-old the last two races. Either one of those win this race. The question is, is she going to be able to do it in New York? But she's done it all over. She's run well at Del Mar, at Oakland, at Churchill. So now she ships into New York. And, uh, you know, it says first-time actress, but Chad says it's still Todd Fincher, and that's good enough for me. You and, know, the, uh, the only thing, the only question is really is the seven for long. Does she want to go a little bit, a little bit further? But like I said, I mean, third last time out at Churchill, beaten two and three-quarter lengths by very possibly the top two fillies in the division in Vava and Avastar, I think is okay. Yeah. yeah, and those last two races are nines, so not many other horses have single-digit numbers. Matter of fact, d does anybody have a single digit? Oh, yeah, no. okay. Big Pond does, okay. Actually, let's talk about Big Pond. So Big Pond is the 4-1 to one shot, ran a 6 in February, also ran an 8 last June, but is coming off a 12 in the first race with William Mott and uh, ran a 16 before that, but that could have been a reaction from the 6. So um, what about Big Pond, John, coming back second race, actually the third race following the six? Well, I think it was a positive trainer change. I mean, take nothing away from Tim Yachtin. He's a fine trainer, but I think Mott is a little bit better. The horse did run an eight first out last year at Santa Anita, which is a huge number. It took the horse almost a year to come back to run that six again at Santa Anita three races back. You know, I guess she has a shot to make a forward move. I don't love the price, but if she run makes a forward move, obviously she has to be considered. So she's okay. I, I think it was a learning experience last time too. I think, you know, maybe 
it was a kind of a weird trip for that filly. I don't think, I mean, Leave No Trace is back in this race again, the horse that beat her. Um, but I do think that Big Pond's a better horse than Leave No Trace. So, um, given the two, I'd want Big Pond moving forward. Like you said, you don't really get the the best price, um, but obviously she's she's fast on her on her best day. That's for sure. All right, now let's talk about. Uh, so, again, going over the odds, uh, do we have three six to one horses? A seed, the three, the eight, and the nine. That's yep. correct. Okay, so let's talk about those three six to one, starting in uh, in order. So uh, Seed, if that's the name of the horse, six to one. This is the Chad Brown, our Red Ortiz horse combo, and it's it's really simple to point out here, even just on the form, that our Red Ortiz Junior is three for three on the horse. So that is uh, very impressive. Now the eleven is not bad uh, compared to a lot of other horses. Again, you don't have the two favorite single digit numbers, John, but you do have a horse coming in off of. Uh, 21, 14, 13, 11, even though the 14 was on turf, so is headed in the right direction. You're getting double the price than, say, Flying Connection. And again, you get Chad Brown and an undefeated Arad Ortiz Jr. on this horse. She's fine. I mean, you know, the, the 14 was last year. The 13 was last year. She just made her first start of the year last time out at Keelan. But if you read between the lines and you only look at the sprint races, she ran 11 last year at Churchill. The 17 was a route race at Belmont, you could throw it out. The 21 was a route race at Saratoga, you could throw it out. The 14 was on the grass at Kentucky Downs, you could throw that out. So you're looking at 11, 13, 11, and she certainly could run another 11. She's a four-year-old, lightly race. She has a license to improve. Look, the barn's always been high on this filly. After she broke her maiden first time out at Gulfstream, they, they, they went swinging for the fences, and that's... That's not really a Chad Brown move. Um, I guess he kind of did it with ways and means. I mean, the horses that he really likes, he does it. And, I mean, she didn't embarrass herself in the eight bells. She was third, beating a length and three quarters by Red Carpet Ready, who ran huge that day. Uh, came back and ran in the grade one acorn. This was a horse that they were very, very high on. So when you hit the reset button and you see him take his time and he wins a couple of allowance races, now she's got her confidence up. And, I mean, she needs to get a little bit faster than those, those first two we talked about. But certainly, it would it would make sense that she can certainly, you know, keep going on that forward trajectory. And I mean, if you get six to one on this filly, I think that's more than fair odds to take a swing, um, you know, on, on her recent form and, and what the Barnes thought of her from the beginning. So, uh, for me, um, I really like the six to one here on its seat. The only little problem is her last two races were on LASIK. She is coming off of LASIK, so that's a little bit of a concern. But it's Chad Brown, and again. You're right, Chad. She's on the improve. She's moving in the right direction. Nothing wrong with her. And, and, and like you said, John, at least you you can go back to the eight bells where she ran without Lasix and ran well that day. And you yeah. have enough of a reason to make excuses for the other non-Lasix races, whether it be distance or grass. So uh, it's not as much as, as so much where it's like you saw a couple of uh, bad races, then a Lasix pop, and then bad. This one, at least she had a good non-Lasix race in her system already correct a good chance though that with brown and what i read ortiz jr that this could be the second choice i don't know i mean look i don't know if she'll I, think, be I, I think the other horses are, are, are more proven stake horses um i think even leave no trace might get a little bit of play here i i i can see her as the third okay. fourth choice uh I, I mean i know there is that irad factor that you know he takes so much money but um it's, it's Chad Brown on the dirt. They don't play Chad Brown on the dirt as much as they play Chad Brown on the grass, I think. Okay. Uh, let's go talk about the other Chad Brown horse. That's the eight, Shida Booty, uh, or Shida Booty. Uh, and this horse is coming off an 11 and a 12 to start the year. Uh, what, what about this horse, John? Three for five wins at Aqueduct. Well, she looks similar to the other Chad Brown horse, you know, the one we just talked about. The only difference is this horse really got better this year. Her two races out this year really were the two best races. I know she does have a 12 last year, but that was one number surrounded by four bad numbers. I kind of like the three a little better. Um, if I had to pick between the two Chad Brown horses, considering they're both the same price. Um, again, a slight edge to the three over the eight, but I could see you using the eight as well. I mean, she ran third last time uh, behind Randomize, who was second, who came back to win the, the grade one uh over the weekend over over the champion philly from brad cox 
uh, and Idiomatic. I, I think there's a big gap, though. I don't like this horse. I've never liked this horse. Um, she's run a couple of okay races. The reasons why she's three for five at Aqueduct is because that's where she belongs. She's she's an Aqueduct winner horse. And I know she – look, I know she won the, the this staff. It's a grade three in April. But, I, I mean, she beat nobody that day. I'm sorry. Fingal's Cave came back and ran awful the other day on Sunday in, in New York. I, I just don't think she's very much horse. Uh, I, I much prefer the other Chad Brown over this one. I don't think this one hits the court. All right. The other six to one is the nine horse, leave no trace, uh, the Serpy horse. And this horse had pretty much done nothing heading into this year. Uh, even the first turf race wasn't wasn't uh, an effort. But the last two races, John, this horse has woken up with back-to-back 11s, both wins, and both at Aqueduct. Yeah, I mean, she's gotten good in her last two races. And last time she ran without Lasix, prior to that, she had excuses. She ran on the turf three races back, on synthetic four races back, and on turf five races back. You know, those two horrible races, one at Saratoga and one at Gulfstream last year, mean nothing. It's obviously a different horse. She's better now. Again, there are two efforts. She's coming off of two big races in her last two starts, but the spacing is okay, and I guess she has somewhat of a shot to hit the board. I don't know if she's good enough to beat uh, some other horses in here. Yeah, I think you say it perfectly, John. Look, she's a great one winner as a two-year-old. It's good to see her round back into form here uh, as a four-year-old for the small barn of of Phil Serpy, who's obviously been around for a long time, knows what he's doing. But uh, I just don't think in this situation you see horses like like Flying Connection and Big Pond. They just – it just feels like they're better, doesn't it? I mean, the look test, the sniff test, it, it just – everything about it just screams – those two are just kind of head and shoulders over a horse. You know, you can make a case for me. You can make a case for Exceed that she's heading up. I think we saw a good performance from Leave No Trace, but I think that's her. That's her peak, right? I, you don't see. You don't see her really. For me, I don't. I don't think I see her. You know, jumping up again with an even better race. So I think. I think we we we've gotten to where she is. She's a good horse, but I don't. I don't know that it goes any higher than where she won the Vagrancy last time. And I, I think. In this race, what it looks like, John, you're going to have to be faster than she was when she won the vacancy. For sure. All right. And then uh, as far as the rest of the field, uh, every, all the other horses are you know, pretty much long shots. John, give me uh, a horse out of those other horses that uh, you want to look at the most. <laughs> Do I have to look at any of them? Uh, well, Apple probably... Picker, the one, does get Velasquez as an upgrade. Does that okay. help you at all or no? No, I'm not sure I mean, it's an upgrade. You fire your husband. I'm not sure. I mean, nobody's going to ride harder for you than your than your spouse. <laughs> if I was looking for a crazy price horse, it would probably be Morning Matcha, the Rob Butch Reed horse. Uh, this horse actually ran against Champagne Poetry a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that horse, the four is uh, coming off three straight twelves, and uh, two wins in the last two. Sanchez uh, apparently has found something with the horse. Well, he's only the leading rider at Park, so that could be the reason. That could be what he found, and he, you know, Butchery sticks with him. He rides his horse well, so why not? Well, she's a she's a cool horse. She's consistent. Uh, you definitely feel like she can. She, she'll come with that late run. You feel like she can definitely be a part of the 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 underneath on an exactor or a trifecta. I don't know. Maybe again, like if she's as good as those top two, but I can definitely see her. Uh, clunking up for second or third uh just Catherine obviously ran that one big race but you know just hasn't come back to it she's gonna have to prove it to us uh to, to show it uh, the, the horse that interests me always and, and 12 to 1 to fair uh, fair odds is Beguine and, and and that's the 10 horse uh with Trevor McCarthy uh she's a really really nice filly um but she and she's gonna she's gonna try and lead out from the outside she, she's she, for at 12 to 1 you take a flyer that she can kind of get away and, and try and get lucky I mean, she's, she's not getting seven furlongs, though, Chad. I just yeah, don't see it. I mean, listen, she's got the right post if she's ever going to be able to do it, drawing outside. But yeah. she just, I, I just, I don't know. She just never quite gets there. I mean, she never lasts. That, I don't think she wants to go that far. Yeah. She ran a six uh, in 2022. Followed well, she that also up. loves water in the track, you know, so. But it's not going to rain, so I yeah. wouldn't worry about it. Yes, yeah. I mean, started off, didn't do nothing. Then all of a sudden, in three races, in the first three races with Pelts, six, eight, seven. But then, you know, we really haven't seen anything better than a 12 since then. All right, selection time. Chad? Sure. 
I don't hear I mean, it's, it, it, it's it's really close for me between flying. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's going to be really close for me between flying connection and exceed. Uh, I'll give the slight edge to to flying connection. Uh, I just I think class gets it on this one, so I'll go with flying connection the six. Uh, on top of exceed the three, big pond the two, and morning mock at the four. But slight, slight, slight favoritism to me: flying connection over exceed. How did we come out with the exact same numbers? Six with two, three, four for me. Uh -oh. Six with two, three, four for Chad. And Mr. Greg. Um, well, I'll do six over three, four, and nine. So I'll, I'll replace the two with the nine. 